So, just to sort of recap um, all the steps we took to get to that transmissibility form, So if you remember, the first thing we did was we derived the PDEs. So we derived the PDEs. Then the next thing we did was we discretized the PDEs. via finite differences. Then we multiplied those multiplied by a constant <coughs> to convert to rates. And with that, we had the transmissibility form. Or the equations. So what we'll do now is take another look at how we might derive those same equations. But this time, we're going to take what's called a control volume approach. And we'll see that ultimately we get the same equations, but this control volume approach might be a little easier to understand, comprehend as we go to uh, two and three dimensions, possibly irregular discretizations, heterogeneities, and other things. Okay. So we're going to look at three grid blocks. Each of these grid blocks we'll call a control volume. This center one we'll call control volume I. Uh, this will be I minus 1. And this will be I plus 1. Right. And we want to write, so what we're going to do, we're going to write conservation of mass directly on grid block one. I'm sorry, grid block I. All right. So remember, conservation of mass was mass in minus mass out plus anything that's injected or produced. must equal the accumulation. That's conservation of mass in words. Right? So let's write conservation of mass for the ith grid block here. All right, so what's, what would come in, what would come in to I would be the density, that, so we want the mass, so we're going to say the density and we're going to just to be explicit, we'll talk about the density in, under reservoir conditions, in the reservoir. The density times the flow rate. And the flow rate is, remember, our, the way we do these grid blocks is they're sort of, uh, these I locations are at the center of these grids. So if something's coming into I, it's actually coming into I from, from right here along the boundary between I minus <coughs> 1 and, and I. And so what we're going to do is we're going to call that uh, the I minus 1 half location. Right? So if this is I and this is I minus 1, this right here is I minus a half. Right? It's halfway in between I and I minus 1. 
You seem like you don't like the notation. Okay. Well, I mean, it's just, it, it, you know, these are, if we assume that they're the same distance apart, I mean, the, the, all of them have delta x, right? Then this this location right here is is halfway. You know, it's it's delta x over two. Well, it, it it will matter because later later we'll do blocks that have varying area. So even in one dimension, you could imagine a reservoir. It could be one dimensional, but it could vary in height as you go along, right? And so it it, it will matter where you place that because it's sort of an averaging approach. Th and this is leading into heterogeneities. Also, blocks with varying permeabil permeability. If if one block has Permeability A and other block has permeability B. What, you know how do you how do you average the two? At, because ultimately we're going to write the flow rate at the at the boundary of the two blocks, all right? All right. So and then of course we have delta T. So we have this is a flow rate, you know, feet cubic feet over time. You know, cubic feet per day times delta T per day, right? So you have cubic feet times density. That's mass. Volume times mass. Volume times density, that's mass, right? So this is the flow in. Right? And the flow out will be Q I plus a half delta T. So this is out. Right? Then Anything that's injected, so this will be like a boundary condition. So uh, what's injected under reservoir conditions times delta T. So this is injected or produced. And then over on the right-hand side, we have the accumulation. So the accumulation is um, the mass in the ith control block at time t plus delta t minus the mass in the ith control block at time t. So this is the accumulation. So that's how much mass can be stored in that control block because of compressibility or other things. T plus delta T, yeah. So just over some time, right? So the mass in the ith control block is going to be the density under reservoir conditions times the porosity times the volume. Right? So this is the, the porosity times the volume is the pore volume times the density that gives us the total mass of fluid in that control block. <coughs> okay, what about Q at the I minus a half? <coughs> Can somebody guess what that'll be? Well, what, do we have an equation for Q? Right? Darcy's law, okay. So, again, I'm going to be sort of particular here. I'm going to say the permeability at the I minus a half, and this is sort of setting the stage for, he for heterogeneity in the future, okay? Over the viscosity, we're, we're just talking about a single thing here, water, times area, right, times the pressure gradient, and the pressure gradient at the I minus a half is the pressure at I minus the pressure at I minus 1 all over delta X. <coughs> and if you remember before we had that 
that we labeled the transmissibility as K times the area over mu times the formation volume factor times delta X. That's how we define transmissibility, right? So you can see that this term times the formation volume factor, right, will give me the transmissibility, right? So in other words, if I multiply by the, the formation volume factor over the formation volume factor, right, that's just, that's just multiplying by one, right? If I do that, then I have those terms that I circled are how we define the transmissibility and I'm gonna I'm gonna label it at the half time the half spatial step. So I minus a half times the formation volume factor times P I minus one minus P I. Alright. And Um, let's see. I think as long as you're consistent, it, it doesn't matter. Um, say it's not going to matter. Um, let me look. Let's hold on to that question and I'll, we'll see if it matters. Let's just hold on to that. I don't think it'll matter. Let's see. Well, I think as, as long as you, you take the difference in the same way, it just depends. It just relabels. You're, re, you're sort of redefining whether it's in or out is all. Something's coming in, something's coming out. And it doesn't matter which side it really comes in or out from. You just have to be consistent, and it may, it may relabel what's in or out, but it'll it'll work out. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh. I see. I see. I see what you're saying. So, yeah, I, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. This should have actually been PI minus one PI. Okay. So, and likewise, we'd have we'd have a similar definition at the I plus one half time step. I won't write that one out. So then, if we plug in the Qs and the MIs, and we just write everything out.
So on the right hand side there, I pulled the volume out, uh, like it's a, treated it like it's a constant. It's not changing from step n one plus one to n. The volume is the volume. It's the control volume, right? It's the volume of. It's not going to change. The density and the and the uh, porosity could change over a time step, but the volume's not going to change. It is the control volume. So then if we divide that equation by the density under standard conditions and delta T, you see that a lot of delta T's cancel. And then you the, the density over reservoir condition divided by the density in standard condition gives you uh, 1 over BWs, which will cancel the BWs that are in some of the terms. So then we have. this guy. Now we're going to manipulate this term, right? So I'm going to write I'm going to write that I'm going to rewrite that term here. So the first term I'm just going to move over. I'm just going to say that I'm just going to copy it over. And then right here I'm going to subtract 0. But my 0 is going to be a special form of 0. So can everyone see that that's 0? I added a term and I subtracted the term. Right. So then I have this last term, minus. Step n is on both of them. So, so what's on the right hand side is, is the same as what's on the left hand side with this minus zero in the middle. Right. So I know that's a little strange, but now what I can do there is it allows me to, to regroup some terms. So that's the same, this is equivalent to the expression above, it's just the terms have been regrouped. And then if you look back in the notes, you'll recall for small compressibility, for small compressibility, we can do a Taylor expansion of uh, the density at some pressure plus some delta P, delta P. So some reference pressure plus delta P. We can Taylor expand that. 
And so this is, if you look back in the notes, you'll see this, but ultimately you, you can arrive at these relationships from that Taylor expansion with small compressibility. So here we're just saying that um, in this case it would be like we're going to Taylor expand the density at step n about some reference density. So delta p would be p n minus p zero. Likewise, for the porosity, so if you plug in these two guys back into these this equation. term that was like this will become Which you see the you'll see the ones cancel, and then you get CF over. You get that, and then the difference in compressibilities. I'm sorry, difference in porosities. Again, the one the ones cancel. So then eventually that and then we're going to make the assumption that the porosity and the porosity and the uh, formation volume factor don't really change from this reference state to the current state or the change is small so that, that they're well they don't change so that they're constant and then if that's true 
then you have CF plus CR, PN plus 1 minus P, N. And C, what's CF plus CR? CT. So then you have So I know that was bad, but it's just algebra with a Taylor set, just algebra with a Taylor expansion in there. And then, so if we put that all back together, we have Now notice <coughs> on the right hand side there's no superscripts on the pressures, right? So in other words, we haven't decided at which, at which time we're evaluating the pressures. The subscripts are the spatial variation, right? The spatial locations. The superscripts would be time and we haven't chosen them. And if, you know, however we choose them gives us our implicit or explicit methods. So if we choose them to be at n plus 1 time, then we get the exact same equations that we had. So since I can't really write in bold font, when I write a matrix, I'll put two arrows, o arrows over it to distinguish it from a vector. So that's the implicit. And if we were to choose the P's to be at N, then we'd have So it's exactly what we had before. It's just we never introduced the, the PDE at all in this case. Right? We just did everything on basically the uh, conservation of mass principle on a control volume, where the 